Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to Lost in the Real and the Director Series, where we cover each and every one of a director's films chronologically. And then at the very end of the series, we will rank all of the films. Right now, we are in the thick of covering Xavier Dolan. And today, we will be going over Tom à la ferme, a.k.a. Tom at the farm. All right, Time at the Farm is Dolan's fourth film and his first, that's an adaptation. And it's also his first as a co-writer. He actually co-wrote the script with the playwright. This is based on a play. Uh, the playwright's name is uh, Michel Marc Bouchard. All right, and this fourth film stars Xavier Dolan himself, as well as Pierre-Yves Cardinal, Lise Roy, and Evelyne Brochou. And it's the story of Tom, who is in the grip of grief and depression following the death of his lover, when he meets the family of the deceased, it's revealed that his mother was not aware of her son's sexual orientation or of his relationship with Tom, and things go from there. All right, Sean, so what did you think of Tom at the Farm? So this was my second time watching this movie, and the first time, I don't know what was going on with me, but I wasn't uh, very engaged in the film, and it, I kind of found it forgettable. Uh, but this time, I found it much more appealing and much more suspenseful. Uh, I do find that this film is... It lacks a lot of Xavier Delon's, uh his directorial flourishes that we've come to really know from him, especially from Laurence anyways. And I was kind of missing that here, uh, but I do find that this is an extremely psychosexual and twisted film, and it's such a slow burn, and it really creeps up on you. And I found it quite compelling. What about you, Chris? Uh, I think this is exceptional. Uh, I think this is really pretty great. Um, this was also my second time watching this. Uh, I liked it even better this time. Um, I think it has maybe one or two missteps, but I wouldn't even bother mentioning them. Mm -hmm. um, as far as what you say you felt like was missing, I was like so relieved watching this, uh, mm -hmm. especially like doing these revisits of his other work before this, because this is uh, like quiet and muted and man, his performance here is really great. Uh, it's really great. It's maybe the best acting that he's done that I've seen. Um, yeah, this, I, I appreciate it. It was almost like him proving that he didn't need all that stuff to tell like a really compelling story. And that too, like it's compelling as, as a thriller, but also as just the study of the dynamic between uh, these two people. So more of like a character study. Yeah. And yeah, I think this is really good stuff. Uh, I was really impressed by it. Like not quite at the level of Laurence anyways, but it's completely different completely different it's definitely to me Xavier Dolan at his most restrained and I do appreciate that because we have seen him just go for it in all of his other films so to see him kind of you know take a step back and you know be more reflective in his filmmaking I really appreciated that and I like what you said about the character study because to me it was very much so a character study of two characters who are dealing with you know, toxic masculinity, repression, uh, as well as dealing with grief in two very different ways. And I found all of that quite interesting. Uh, yeah, to me, I think it's more about abuse, um, the cycle of abuse, like where that comes from. It's a very violent film, um, physically and emotionally, but there's not like blood and gore. Um, there's the character of the dead lover's brother, uh, Francis, and he is a rough and brutal, uh, being almost like psychopathic or sociopathic. I mean, I'm not a psychiatrist, um, but he has that kind of coldness 
and it's never exaggerated. Uh, to me, this is very like real world. I believe this just about every step of the way. Yeah, to me, this was like just totally separate from the earlier films. Those are more like romantic and all this. Um, but this too deals with love, but it deals with a very different idea of love. Um, very different. And like as a thriller, it's unexpected and surprising. But then as drama, it's like devastating and really insightful, uh, uncomfortably so. It really like it leaves a lot of details up to you. Mm -hmm. And I appreciated that so much. Like I still now I, after having watched it, I'm still reeling through like possibilities, like what happened to the father mm -hmm. for one. And who was Guillaume really? Guillaume is the deceased lover because there are some kind of revelations toward the end that are like really interesting, especially yeah. given, given the dynamic of the brother. We find out that um, Guillaume had been lying to his mother about dating this woman named Sarah, who he and Tom both worked with. And so the brother Francis insists that Tom follow up um, like with this ruse of the girlfriend, Sarah. And there's a few conversations with the mother, um, Agathe, where Tom like absorbs the identity. Mm -hmm absorbs the identity of Sarah and of Guillaume. So he is not himself anymore when he's at the farm. Like only in moments where this kind of survival instinct finally kicks in within him when he like is able to realize the abuse he's experiencing and how it's way more, I'm so sorry, I'm rambling. You go. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love that you brought that up because there is a scene here when he is kind of channeling Sarah or channeling what he felt with Guillaume. Uh, and when he's speaking about something, it made me feel so uncomfortable. And it is just like one of those seats like, oh, like it just makes you squirm in your seat. Um, but I, I definitely, I loved that. Um, I think to me personally, this is a story about, um, like you said, love. But I think that Tom is trying to find a surrogate for Guillaume uh, to get through his grief. And he finds that in Francis. And Francis is also trying to find a surrogate for Guillaume. And he finds that within Tom. But they obviously use that in different ways, you know, where Tom is looking for someone to have compassion for him and to be there with him and to comfort him. Francis is, you know, trying to basically find someone that he can beat on, that he can harass, that he can repress, which is probably how he treated his brother as well uh, before his brother escaped the farm. Yeah, I agree. And also because of the way that uh, Francis acts, it like, I immediately think of like, what must the father have been like? Mm. And also the sort of revelations we find out about Guillaume, the way he is also point to, I'm not going to say what these revelations are, but they also point toward like severe abuse um, having happened. And we haven't even touched yet on the really fascinating, almost disturbing um, sexual undertones. Mm -hmm. Um, well, it's one of my favorite things about the film because it really toys with you in these moments and really puts you into um, Tom's mind, like his experience during those moments. Very stressful, but also kind of bordering that line between like dangerous in a fun and exciting kind of way but you have to like pull yourself back because of what a fucking psycho mm -hmm. this guy is. Yeah, I don't think that would have worked as well 
if uh, Pia Yves Cardinal, uh, who plays Francis, if he wasn't so damn good in this movie and as terrifying as he is. Yes, he and is. what I find so fascinating about his character is that he is so unpredictable because there are moments that he opens up and lets Tom in and there's almost a nurturing side to him. And then like with a flip of a switch, all of a sudden he becomes, like you said, a psychopath. And that's what I think makes this film as twisted and messed up as it is psychologically because of his performance and also Tom or Xavier Dolan is Tom as well. This is just like a, like a really great piece of work. It's, mm. it's up there on my list uh, as far as films of his, that's for sure. Definitely. So do you want to give your uh, score for Tom at the farm? Uh, yeah. Easy for me. Uh, like I said, it's not quite uh, at the height of the haunts anyways, but uh, I would give this, what, what, what are we rating this out of? Xavier Dolan heads out of five. <laughs> That's right. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to do five. Oh, there's that, there's that fifth finger. Five uh, Xavier Dolan faces out of five. Perfect score. Five out of five, yeah. Oh, okay. You do love this movie. <laughs> yeah, I, I think this is uh, excellent. Yeah. I am going to be giving it 3.5 Xavier Dolan heads out of five. I definitely, <laughs> I definitely like this movie so much more the second time around. I uh, was unnerved by it, and I found it extremely intense, and it really messed with my head. I do find that there are moments of uh, logic that don't make sense like I, I literally screamed at the screen one time like stop milking those fucking cows and get the f out of there like why aren't you leaving just go uh so that kind of bothered me um but you also do kind of understand why he doesn't leave as well and why he stays but um i do think that this is a great film but it's definitely not my favorite Word. I mean, I appreciate that. But man, now, now I want to have a whole other discussion about what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean? He tried to leave like multiple times. First, he was stopped by his own guilt and then he was stopped by Francis. And then, well, we can't talk about what happens later. But I, it, it it didn't work. It that didn't work for me. I was like, if he if he if he really need, like he knew he needed to get out of there and he should have gotten out of there. I don't I don't believe that anything was stopping him from leaving. I think we read it very differently because I. Thank you so much, guys, for watching Lost in the Real, the director series. Our next film in Xavier Dolan's filmography is Mommy. So we'll see you then.